Our neurological health influences everything from cognition and emotional balance to motor coordination and sleep patterns. These are all extremely fundamental to our daily lives. Understanding the brain and the nervous system is an extremely complex process and monitoring its health is extremely crucial as well. Over the past decades, uh, it has been the era of technology. And so with, with time, a medical practice has adapted and adopted those technological tools. Uh, one such tool is probably the wearable device that has been in the market now for several different years. You know, it helps us uh, monitor heart rate variability, sleep cycles, oxidative stress, several different facets again, uh, which are important to uncover uh, and monitor. Now, you know, when you go to a doctor and you take some of this information with you, you know, wearable devices not only give you alerts, but they also uh, give you uh, and guide you with clarity. In the modern world, knowledge is power. Uh, and data is knowledge. You know, getting more data about your own health will actually uh, empower patients to actually take care in their own health moving forward. Our neurological health influences everything from cognition and emotional balance to motor coordination and sleep patterns. These are all extremely fundamental to our daily lives. In today's world, lifestyle related diseases like obesity and diabetes are on the rise as well and research now clearly links them to our brain health and this brings us to a very critical and pressing question that is as we navigate these modern challenges can wearable technology empower us with the insights we need to proactively support our neurological well-being Hello and welcome to Samsung Health Watch, your go-to podcast for meaningful conversation on the convergence of health and technology. I'm your host, Raisha Segal, and today we are exploring one of the most important topics, one of the most intricate systems in our human body, that is the nervous system and perhaps how innovations in wearable technology are helping us monitor it more effectively in today's time. And joining us today is Dr. Vishal Shah. He's a renowned neurologist in the United States of America. Dr. Vishal, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Raisha. It's a pleasure to be with you to talk about this interesting and evolving topic. Let's start first by unpacking the complexity of the nervous system. Why is it perhaps so uniquely challenging to monitor neurological health, uh, perhaps compared to something like uh, tracking your heart rate? That's a great question. Uh, understanding the brain and the nervous system is an extremely complex process uh, and monitoring its health is extremely crucial as well. Uh, you know, what I tell my patients is that brain and the nervous system is an electrical system. Uh, and with the electrical process, it helps us control movements, sensations, memory, emotions, and many more functions. And so there are several different facets that need to be monitored to really understand the health of the brain. Uh, my medical school professor used to tell me that understanding and monitoring brain is like flying a plane. Uh, you have several different facets that need to be monitored and looked after. And the one problem in any one system will cause uh, problems all across the plane uh, and the body, essentially. And so there are several different tools like EEGs, MRIs, CT scans, EMGs. Uh, so we have several different things to look at uh, the brain. And so it becomes a complex system to understand. Right, Dr. Vishal, I, I absolutely get your point and that clearly does paint a vivid picture. But to take that point perhaps a little more forward, I want to ask you that uh, considering that the variables that we're seeing today, how they've come a long way in recent years from a neurology standpoint, how are these consumer grade devices starting to fill uh, some of the gaps in long term brain health monitoring? Yeah. Uh, you know, medical practice initially was all based on clinical tools and examination. Over the past decades, uh, it has been the era of technology. And so with, with time, a medical practice has adapted and adopted those technological tools. Uh, one such tool is probably the wearable device that has been in the market now for several different years. You know, it helps us uh, monitor heart rate variability, sleep cycles, oxidative stress, several different facets, again, uh, which are important to uncover uh, and monitor. Now, you know, when you go to a doctor and you take some of this information with you, the work of a doctor becomes so much more easier to understand what's been going on in your daily life so that they can shape treatment options based on those functions. 
Right, Dr. Vishal, I, I absolutely get your point about how the wearable devices, like the one which even I'm wearing right now, how they've perhaps become a part of our life. And we've also been seeing the emergence of wellness indicators, to name some, like the antioxidant index, vascular load during sleeping, bedtime coaching, and daily readiness scores based on AI. My question to you, Dr. Vishal, is that uh, how can these insights expand neurological care? Yeah, I, I, I believe these are incredibly promising uh, avenues. Uh, antioxidant index is essentially a marker of oxidative stress. Uh, these can be at markers of neurodegenerative conditions or inflammatory conditions that may affect the brain's health system. The vascular load uh, is an index of cardiovascular strain, uh, which is often noticed uh, or monitored during sleep. And this, this is crucially important because that is also the time when the brain is undergoing re restorative processes. Bedtime guidance leverages uh, circadian rhythm science to understand uh, sleep patterns and the quality of sleep. Uh, this is important not only for uh, cognition, but also memory and a daily activity level. Uh, then there are other AI-driven tools uh, which monitor the heart rate uh, variability, heart rate rhythm. Uh, these, along with uh, traditional tools like ECG and blood pressure monitors, uh, give us great insights into the heart's ability to support the rest of the body and the brain system, which will then eventually give you a 360-degree view of the neurological resistance of a person. Okay, Dr. Vishal, yes, but uh, how can users practically respond to all these metrics? Yeah, think of these as gentle nudges. So a rising antioxidant index may suggest a change in your diet or maybe a nutrition boost that may be required. Uh, vascular load may suggest onset of silent disorders like hypertension. Bedtime coaching is essential to understand one's sleep cycles and sleep rhythms, uh, and that may actually help you understand uh, how a consistent recovery process can be achieved just by uh, improving your sleep cycles. Uh, a low energy score may actually suggest not only requirement for uh, some physical rest, but also mental rest. And so think of these variables uh, as pieces of puzzles. And so, you know, sometimes to understand or solve a puzzle, you need to look at the whole picture. And that's what this, these variables provide us. They provide us the whole picture. And so this helps doctors make the right decision in terms of taking the next steps. Right, right. Absolutely, Dr. Vishal, that is a perhaps interesting point that you've made there. Now, continuous heart rate tracking and IHRN, they've become standard in many wearables from perhaps a neurological lens. What potential do they hold? Yes, uh, so I think this is a truly exciting time uh, for wearable devices and its integration into neurological healthcare. The integration of continuous heart rate monitoring uh, has probably been the biggest game changer in terms of uh, wearable device technology. Uh, you know, uh, heart rate monitoring or regular heart rate monitoring system helps us get alerts about a patient's uh, heart rate. Uh, the most common or the most rising disorder in terms of heart rate is something called atrial fibrillation, which is a major risk factor for an ischemic stroke. And so wearable devices by alerting those individuals may actually alert the patient uh, regarding this impending uncovered diagnosis. You know, uh, traditional clinical tools used to be invasive and time-consuming to actually be able to diagnose atrial fibrillation. But with wearable devices, we can actually uh, uncover this in a non-invasive fashion. Similarly, uh, for sleep disorders, uh, the wearable device technology, including the heart rate monitoring, uh, actually provides great information about the the stages of sleep that a person is achieving. And that in turn will help us understand the quality of sleep that they are receiving. And those factors can then help uh, understand and improve patient's health. So, you know, the integration of heart rate monitoring uh, is helping us advance neurological uh, diagnosis, but also empowering individuals to take an active part in their healthcare. Right, Dr. Vishal, you've, you've, you've clearly been talking here about uh, how the wearables can come in handy from a neurological point of view. Just to take that point forward and on that same very thought, are there any other sensor-based advancements in wearable tech that you believe could perhaps reshape neurological care in the coming years? Yeah, certainly. Um, blood pressure tracking, continuous heart rhythm monitoring, oxygen saturation levels, I think these are already game changers. Uh, some of these data points now, along with the use of AI, will actually help us uh, perform some predictive insights into how to take care of the patients. 
uh, you know, wearable devices not only give you alerts, but they also uh, give you uh, and guide you with clarity. In the modern world, knowledge is power uh, and data is knowledge. And so, you know, getting more data about your own health will actually uh, empower patients to actually take care in their own health moving forward. Now that you've listed out the pros, are there any kind of limitations, Dr. Vishal, that we really need to be mindful of? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, wearable devices are not diagnostic tool. Uh, they provide you data. Uh, but, you know, as, as with any data, data can be confusing. You have to separate the signal from the noise. And uh, how you interpret the data may actually differ from person to person. And so it is crucially important to collect all the data. Uh, I, I don't think there's a harm in that. But then to interpret the data, I think you need to take that data to the right person. And in, your, in most cases, you know, it's a physician that you go to and you understand that data with the help of the physician. Right, Dr. Vishala, we've been seeing how every second person today is wearing a wearable. And my question to you is that how can users perhaps uh, make their wearable data more meaningful when discussing it with their doctors? Yeah, I think most devices provide exportable reports or visual summaries. Um, I would suggest you either print them out or you keep them ready to be shared with your uh, physician. Uh, you know, often patients come to my clinic uh, with with a bundle of information. Uh, and then only that information is not enough for me to really diagnose. You know, you need to have a narrative summary of your symptoms or your complaints as well. And so integration of your complaints with the data that you get from the wearable device will be crucial. Right, Dr. Vishal, absolutely. Now, with fitness being so crucial today, Many struggle with motivation when it comes to running. My question to you is that can wearables be the key to building consistent running habits and perhaps keeping users engaged? Yeah, I think it's a truly incredible feature of the wearable devices. Uh, they not only measure the number of steps, but they also measure uh, data like pace, heart rate, the distance, the cadence. Uh, and the most important part is they actually provide feedback. You know, you see your progress as you go through it. We've all experienced this before. Uh, but not only that, it actually goes ahead and tells you the information about your heart rate, your heart rhythm, and how that has been affected as a result of uh, your habits. You know, you, you combine all of this information um, with AI-powered tools, uh, and then you get something called a running coach, uh, which basically not only gives you tangible information about your uh, the effect of these fitness uh, maneuvers on your health, but it also provides you an engaging and rewarding experience. I think the, the positive feedback, the positive reinforcement that someone gets by just having a, a personalized uh, kind of an assistant uh, in this will go a long way in having people adhere to their fitness regimens. Right, right. Absolutely, uh, Dr. Vishal. Now, with all this data, what ethical and privacy challenges should we be mindful of? Yes, Raisha. I think security is very important. Uh, neurological data or healthcare data is really your personal data. Uh, and so all of this needs to be in an encrypted form. It does need to be an informed consent. And protection from misuse uh, is paramount. Uh, I'm sure healthcare companies or, or companies that are coming up with wearable devices are looking into this to maintain uh, transparency and protect this data and information. Right, absolutely, uh, Dr. Vishal. Great insights coming from you on that end. But before we close, my last question to you, what's your final advice for users navigating this growing world of health data? Uh, yes, Raisha, I think uh, it's, it's crucial to understand that wearable devices are your partners in your healthcare decision. They don't replace the tests, they don't replace the devices, medications, or the physicians that you consult. But remember, the data that you receive from these wearable devices uh, is something that you supplement in a, in, with all the information that you have. Always use the information from, that you get from wearable devices in context of your symptoms and always under supervision from your physician. Right, Dr. Vishal, thank you so much for taking out your time and joining us here today and perhaps simplifying this very complex topic, your insights has clearly elevated our understanding today. Thank you, Raisha. It was a pleasure talking with you. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in to this episode of Samsung Health Watch. We hope that this episode has inspired you to see your wearable not just as perhaps a gadget, but a companion in your journey to better brain health. See you next time. But till then, stay healthy and stay curious. 